Very good morning to you. Welcome to the West Ham Voice on a Monday morning. I hope you've all had a very pleasant weekend. Um, look, <clears throat> it's a new week. It's a new round of uh, transfer rumours. Uh, we're awash with them, aren't we? There are more transfer rumours and the window still hasn't opened yet. You know, the window's not going to open for at least another 11 days, something like that, 12 days. So, uh, you know, buckle in uh, because uh, there's going to be so much more to come uh, or if there hasn't been already. Look, if you're new to the channel, uh, please do hit that like button and subscribe button if you like what you see and what you hear. Um, it's easy to subscribe. It doesn't cost you any money. And if you don't have a YouTube account, very easy to set one up. All you've got to do is um, use your email address, set one up. You don't have to put any content on YouTube. All you have to do is set up an account and become a subscriber. Uh, like I say, it doesn't cost you any money. So what are we going to talk about? Well, I'm going to give you a roundup of some of the more uh, some of the more prominent uh, transfer stories. I'm not going to go into every single one of them. I'll be here till tomorrow morning if I did that. Um, you know, but so I'm going to try and pick out the ones that I think have got a little bit of substance to them uh, and um, see what you think about them. Look, it's it's transfer windows can be fantastic, but they can also be really, really annoying, can't they? Because we get really excited. When we hear a story, we get really excited, and then we find out that something's happened, something scuppered it at the last minute. And when we start, then we start pointing fingers. We blame the board. We blame Sullivan for not spending the money, etc. But that's hardly been accurate over the past few years. You know, he, he backed Pellegrini, he backed Moyes, uh, and we still need to rebuild our squad even after all that. Um, and, I, and I think um, what's happening now under Hulan Lopetegui and under Tim Stiden is we're hearing that uh, they want to get their transfer business done early. Uh, Lopetegui wants a 25-man squad if he can get it, but he wants as many of them. I know there's going to be the Euros and various other things happening in the summer, but he wants as, uh, as many of the squad players to be available at the beginning of July when uh, the, the club, uh, the team meet up for pre-season. Look, you know, you can speculate how many players we're going to get in. There's talk that we're going to get about six in. We know we need six, seven, eight, maybe even nine players to have a full 25-man squad. Uh, so I'm not surprised that there are so many rumours knocking around. But at the same time, we know, you know, that we're not going to go out and buy nine players in one window. We did it a few years ago, but I think that was unprecedented. Also, we need to be really careful about uh, the players that we've been linked to in terms of cost because we don't have a big transfer budget. You know, we've heard that it's going to be circa 90, 100, 120 million. I said the other day, I think it's going to be nearer the 120 million mark. Um, and um, that means, you know, to get five, six players in, we're not going to have an awful lot of money to spread around. But this is what Tim Stiden is here for. Tim Stiden is not the man that goes out and buys 40, 50 million pound players. He is the pearl diver, as he's called. You know, he uh, unearths decent players uh, for a, a very little money. So let's see what happens in this window. Right. What are the stories I'm going to uh, mention? Well, obviously, the first one is the one on everyone's lips at the moment. And everyone's sort of waiting to hear the latest uh, story as to whether we've actually going to sign this wonder kid from Brazil, Luis Guilherme. Now, last week in the show I did on Saturday, uh, I said that personal terms had been agreed with the player himself and with his family and negotiations were ongoing with the club. The club wants circa £25 million pounds plus add-ons. Uh, I mentioned that uh, there's going to be a 20% sell-on clause as well. And I dare say um, there's going to be some kind of uh, uh, option uh, within the contract like uh, uh, to to be able to uh, for for the player to move on if need be. Now I said that he's likely to get a five year deal with a, maybe an option of another year on top. Uh, and Nicholas Shearer, who's an ITK on social media, suggested much the same thing on his tweet on Sunday. Now let's see if this one gets over the line. Apparently. Uh, he's close to having his medical is going to be flown over once the deal has been agreed with uh, uh, both clubs between uh, Steiden for West Ham and pa uh, Palmeiras. Uh, he will then fly over for his medical. Fingers crossed on that one, because if we do get that one, all these other transfer rumours linking us to attacking wide players are going to probably go out the window. But I'll tell you who else we've got, because uh, the next one is something is um, a story that we heard about in January. We already heard 
that Wilfred Zaha was offered to David Moyes and uh, Moyes turned him down for whatever reason. Uh, it's a uh, rumour is that uh, Zaha wants to come back to the Premier League. Galatasaray are probably happy to let him go, to sell him. Uh, he's done okay at Galatasaray, but at 31, coming turning 32 in November, I've, I've no doubt that Zaha can offer something, but uh, maybe Galatasaray are looking to uh, get their money back on him. All right, he signed on a free, but he, they paid him a signing on fee of something like 2.3 million. He was on 70, he is on about 72 grand a week. And that means that they would have spent circa six million pounds on him altogether, six, seven million pounds on him altogether. So Galatasaray will be happy to let him go, but obviously they're going to look for some kind of profit. So I'm thinking that he might be, you know, sold for around about 10 million or so. Now, look, he's not a bad player. He can bring something to West Ham. I do worry about his age. I mean, he can still certainly offer quite a lot at his age, but uh, my mind keeps thinking uh, as much as I know he'll probably be decent for us, I would much rather West Ham United go for a much younger player. And the next one on the radar is uh, Yota Silva. Now, uh, he plays for Portuguese club Vitoria Guimaraes. Uh, he's been with his current club since around 2022, where he signed for a mere £170,000. Now, in the two seasons, he's done quite well. 82 appearances, scoring 19 goals with 11, 11 assists. His performances have earned him a senior Portuguese call-up. He made two substitute appearances back in March in friendly games. He has a £17 million release clause in his contract. He's 24 years of age. And apparently, here's the bit that I find a little bit funny. Apparently, we've already agreed a four-year deal with him. Well, we haven't even spoken to his club, let alone uh, speaking to the players. So I don't get that. I don't buy that bit, to be quite honest with you, where that comes from. Maybe we want to offer him a four-year deal. Yeah, fine. Um, and uh, maybe that uh, he's, he, uh, he's the sort of player that I would rather we be hearing about. You know, a player that's up and coming, a player that's, uh, you know, still quite young, a player that wants to make a mark, you know, the next step in his career, you know, trying it, trying it out in the Premier League. I get the Zaha thing, but the Yacht, but the Yota Silver one kind of gives me, um, excites me a little bit more, to be quite honest with you. Now, look, he's a left-sided player. He's right-footed, plays on the left side, a bit like Zaha. So he will be in contrast to the player that we're linked to uh, from Palmeiras, uh, uh, Guilherme, because he plays primarily on the right side. The other difference with Yota Silva is he can play across the front line. He can play as a striker if need be. So, I'm going to look out for that one. Now, uh, there's no Euros that's going to uh, impede on this uh, deal if it happens because he's not been selected for the Portuguese national squad. Uh, they've got quite a decent squad, but uh, I dare say he is one for the future. So we'll look out for him. Now, what about strikers? We've been linked to quite a number of strikers, haven't we? Of course, um, there's the rumour that... Um, uh, that, oops, I'll go back on that one. Apparently, there's a rumour that uh, Lopetegui wants to team up again with uh, Yusuf and Naziri. Now, um, um, this one, I wasn't too sure initially whether there was any substance to this, but uh, Naziri is contracted with um, uh, Sevilla until 2025. My mistake, I've misspelled his name. There's no O in it. Um and he's valued at around £20 million, pounds, 26 years of age. Apparently, in his last game for uh, the Spanish club, he was bidding farewell. There was an emotional sort of, it looked like he was saying farewell to the club. He's going to be turning um, 27 soon, but there's still a few uh, good years left in him. And I think uh, maybe because he knows Lopetegui's style, that it kind of makes sense, an awful lot of sense to actually go for him. So I think he is the favourite in terms of uh, strikers that we're looking out for. I'm at, we've been linked to loads, Ivan Tony, various others, etc. But Enzir is the one that I think sticks out for me more than any of the others. Now, another one that uh, we've been linked to is uh, Tammy Abraham, uh, currently playing for AS Roma. Now, he's still got two years left on his contract, uh, valued at over £30 million. He hasn't had the best of seasons. He spent most of it on the sidelines with a crucial ligament injury. He returned to action at the end of April, scored a couple of goals. Um, but I think that the Italian club are looking to move him on now. And I think they're looking to get as money, much money back uh, on him as they possibly can. Hence the valuation of around 30 million pounds. Now, look, I think it's an interesting one. 
I think it's a player that we uh, might be uh, interested in. He, he, he's decent, uh, Tammy Abraham. You know, he's played for England, etc. And he, he's uh, got something about him, and he might well fit into the um, into the format that uh, um, Lopetegui likes to play. So it'd be interesting to look out for that one. Now, what about a couple of keepers? Well, last week we talked about Wes Fodringham, you know, who left uh, Sheffield United at the end of the season after they got relegated. But now we've got other rumours of other uh, uh, goalies that we're linked to as well. And the first one, well, I'm going to be only going to mention this one is Azmir uh, Begovic. Now, he's just finished his career at uh, QPR, uh, free agent now, um, 36 years of age. Look, he turns 37 in a few weeks' time, Begovic, but he's got a, one hell of a long career uh, behind him. Um, Ch- Chelsea, various other clubs, etc. He'd be a very, very experienced keeper to bring in. Now, it's interesting. Not many people were favouring Wes Fodringham when that story came out. I wonder what fans would think about Begovic if he was the one to come in instead. Just like Fodringham, He'll be a free agent, probably won't cost us a lot of money in wages as well, given that he was, he was playing for QPI. He's probably, he, wasn't on, he probably wasn't on a lot of money there. But the only difference between Fodringham and uh, Begovic is if Fodringham came in, he would make up the tally or he would help towards making up the tally for homegrown players, whereas Begovic doesn't do that. So it's going to be interesting. Now, there's something about Fodringham which kind of surprised me. There was talk at the weekend that if we do bring Fodringham in, or if we do bring a third, uh, you know, a third choice keeper in, uh, apparently we're going to end up selling either Christian Heggy or Nathan Trott. Now, hmm, I'm not too sure about that. I talked when I did a show about uh, goalies on Friday that, um, you know, the very nature of bringing in an experienced keeper like Fodringham might help with, you know, de- developing some of the uh, academy players. But in terms of Heggy and Trot, uh, I think West Ham United have got other plans for them. That's my understanding. West Ham United, um, you know, uh, Heggy has got one year left on his contract. They're looking to probably send him out on loan. He had a decent spell on loan at Stevenage and also at Den Bosch, the Dutch club. And it, uh, West Ham United are thinking of sending him out on loan again. But this time, maybe a bit more of a challenging, uh, maybe a League One club, something like that, to see how he fares. Now, you know, I'm not going to hold too much about the fact that he's only in his last year of his contract because last season, Nathan Trott was also in the last year of his contract. But what West Ham United did, they extended his deal. They extended his contract and added an option of a further two years. And what they've done uh, um, recently is they've extended that, um, they've taken up that option. Now, um, Nathan Trott has had a pretty decent time out in the Danish club uh, Viborg, uh, sorry not Viborg, uh, Vajal BK uh, he had a pretty decent loan spell, two years there, and then West Ham United are looking to send him out on loan again, but this time they would like to send him out to a championship club hopefully he'll be a first choice keeper and see how he fares now, of course, when you extend the player's contract, that also gives you the option of selling them at, uh, some sort of getting some money back. But I think uh, West Ham aren't going to sell uh, Nathan Trot or Heggie just because we're getting a third choice keeper in this time round. Now, what about uh, other players? Well, we've been linked to a couple of defenders and an interesting one is a left back, which I found rather odd in a way. Ferdi Kadioglu plays for Fenerbahce, apparently caught the eye of West Ham. But I'm parking this story for now, as I don't believe we're looking for a left back too soon. You know, we've extended the contract of of, uh, Aaron Creswell. We've given him an extra year. So he's he's cover for Emerson. So I don't think it's a priority for us at the moment. Now, of course, um, we're still waiting for uh, the deal, uh, or hopefully trying to resurrect the deal for for Fabrizio Bruno, whilst um, Steiden is out in Brazil. But of course, if we do not uh, manage to uh, convince uh, Bruno that West Ham United is for him, there's always the fallback on looking at Max Kilman again. Now, Max Kilman, um, we were linked to him last season before Lopetegui uh, came to West Ham. Now that Lopetegui's here, of course, you know, there's rumour that we're interested in him and again and again. Now, very decent player, uh, English in, uh, English player as well, so he'll make up the, the homegrown tally. But uh, his price tag of £40 million, I think, is something that's going to pro- probably put uh, West Ham United off. Like I said, 
our, our budget at the moment isn't the massive budget of 120 odd million pounds. Uh, but if, if we spent 40 million of that on Max Kilman, if we end up spending about 25 uh, plus add ons on uh, um, uh, the, the Guilherme as well, all of a sudden you're going to be left with not much to actually get another four or five players in. So, again, I think it's an interesting one. I think uh, you know, West Ham are trying to sort out the, uh, the, the deal for. Um, uh, for uh, Bruno, but if they don't, they might well look at uh, Max Kilman as a more expensive alternative. Now, uh, more details in terms of defenders, of course, are defenders that are likely to leave West Ham. Now, we've heard it's no, it's no secret that uh, both Ben Johnson and um, uh, Nyfa Gerd are looking to leave the club. Apparently, Ben Johnson's got an awful lot of interest from several clubs. Uh, Crystal Palace are the favourites to sign him. He leaves on a free at the end of June, uh, and we haven't been able to persuade him to stay. Now, apparently, for a good knife, um, Atletico Madrid and his previous club, Bronze, as well as a couple of other French clubs, are apparently interested in him. Now, the thing is, neither uh, the French club or the Spanish club can afford the £35 million fee that we're going to want back. Apparently, Atletico, they, they, they've got Champions League, so that will um, sort of interest uh, Ger, but this doesn't interest us because what we're looking for is to get the money that we paid for him. Uh, and that is around about the £35 million mark. Atletico are apparently offering £20 million. Clearly, um, we're not going to... well. I'm going to say we're not going to sell him for that, but uh, stranger things have happened, I guess. Uh, look, we're not in a rush to sell a good. Yes, of course, we'd like the money, but if he stays, then that saves us having to go out and buy another centre-back. And maybe, just maybe, Lopetegui can get him to play the kind of football, a yeah, different kind of football for West Ham, and maybe a good will enjoy himself and, and stay at the club. So it'd be interesting to see what happens there as well. But, uh, you know, when, when I hear about left-backs, I all of a sudden go, <laughs> how come it's an interesting one but i don't think it's going to happen but um certainly the the bruno one and maybe the kilman one uh, might be a little bit more realistic i want to end with one other player and he's a central midfielder and there's a reason why i want to talk about this player is because we still don't know there's a big cloud looming over um lucas paqueta and whether we're going to have him available at all next season uh, but if we don't, we're going to have to find a replacement. We're going to have to find someone that can play in that role. Um, and this player, uh, Diego Gomez, is an interesting one. 21 years of age, Paragu already a Paraguayan, uh, full Paraguayan international. He plays for Inter Miami of the MLS. Bear me out. Uh, he's highly regarded. Uh, and when reading his details, he does sound like the type of player that Lopetegui might take a shine to. Uh, with clouds looming over uh, Paqueta, we're going to need to do something. Look, um, Gomez is a box-to-box -box midfielder, aggressive in the attack, intelligent and technically gifted. He might be available for a fee of around £15 million. He's currently sidelined with an ankle injury, but is likely to make uh, the Paraguayan squad for the forthcoming Olympics uh, later this year. And apparently uh, Inter Miami don't want to listen to any offers until after that uh, tournament is over. It's pretty obvious why, because if he has a pretty good uh, Olympics, they're going to be looking to sell him for more money. Look, he's got great passing ability. He's a player who excites the crowd. Uh, he's coupled with, with a great defensive prowess as well. At 21 years of age, he'd be an interesting player for us to, to look at. Right, that's it. There's plenty of others. I know there's the Marcus Edwards story and various other stories that are looming around as well, and I will do a show on those too. So do bear uh, bear with me, and I'll and I'll catch up with all the all the other transfer rumours. Uh, there's going to be a West Ham Weekly on Monday night for later on uh, tonight. So do uh, tune in for that. Uh, there will be other other uh, shows coming up as well. So, like I said, if you're new to the channel, please do hit that like button down there. Become a, a subscriber. And I'll see you all very, very soon.